Good day. My name is Nongululeko Vilagazi and I am currently a BA Psychology and Master's Drama Therapy student at the University of the Witwatersrand. I'm also a prospective MA Drama and Movement Therapy student at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, which is a department under the University of London. This video serves as an introduction to what drama and movement therapy is about, but please note that I am a student in training, so all information stated on this video is based on my praxis-based understanding of the study through the Sesame training. Sesame training in drama and movement therapy has its foundations on the theories of Marion Bililinkovic's movement with touch and sound, Carl Jung's analytical psychology, Rudolf Laban's art of movement, and Peter Slade's child drama. As you may have noticed, these and as well as all the theory we engage with within the drama therapy and psychology field are from a Western perspective. My interest in pursuing a drama therapy profession is to bring in the African ways of knowing and doing, and that as a black therapist, this will be advantageous in formulating and rewriting a South African cultural drama and movement therapy theory, and as well as exploring a contextual practice inclusive of African movement and dance forms. Before we can get into what these theories are about, we can move straight into defining what drama therapy is. Although drama and therapy can be looked at as separate concepts and practices, the merging of these disciplines form an interdisciplinary process-based therapeutic practice that makes use of theater and drama techniques as means to achieve therapeutic goals in the treatment of the client's social, behavioral, cognitive, and psychological health and well-being. Johnson defines drama therapy as an intentional use of the creative drama towards the psychotherapeutic goals of symptom relief, emotional and physical integration, and for personal growth. The use of various art modalities assists in the therapeutic inquiry based on their particular aesthetic ability to maintain a cognitive titra titration distancing. Drama techniques, namely storytelling, role-playing, puppetry, improvisation, characterization, movement and play, but not limited to these, can be used as vehicles to project the client's unconscious and inner feelings. It is the space created in the intersection between the psychological and dramatic expertise for the well-being and mental health of the client. While drama therapy employs the intentional use of psychology and counseling, this therapeutic practice is a non-confrontational therapy approach which is not limited to verbal psychotherapy. Drama therapy has a number of key pioneers and innovative practitioners who have worked parallel from their own capacity to help shape the practice to what it is today. On interviews that were carried out by Dr. Sue Jennings, Muli Lahad described drama therapy as the combination of multimodals or the multimodality of the arts that manifests itself in the dramatic art act. From this, one can then think of drama and movement therapy as the use of art modalities and drama techniques as means to observe or analyze, explore, and unpack an individual's personal experiences for therapeutic goals. Drama therapy could then be seen as a therapeutic space that allows the client to engage with the content, process, and new formed relationships within the therapeutic space. This space is both a fictional and physical space. Drama therapy takes on an individual and group form therapy. The detailed description of the course um, in the training as a drama and movement therapy entails a detailed theoretical and experiential learning followed by clinical placements in a wide variety of settings in order to gain experience working with various population groups. These settings are namely the mental health clinics, schools, hospital medical units, 
hospital mental health units, substance abuse treatment centers, adult day treatment facilities, correctional facilities, community centers, after school programs, programs for older adults, college counseling centers, programs for persons with disabilities, businesses, programs for refugees and immigrants, shelters, residential facilities, nursing homes, private practice settings, corporations, theaters, house projects, medical schools, training organizations, but to name a few, where the client populations will include people with developmental delays, physical disability, mental disability, emotional disturbance, persons suffering from psychiatric illnesses, learning disabilities, autism, sensory impairment, language or communication disorders, neurological injuries and traumas, persons in life transitions, the elderly, persons undergoing rehabilitation from substance abuse, trauma, bereavement and other life crises, people seeking personal growth and self-development, offenders, prison populations, persons suffering from terminal illnesses, are just a few of some of the population groups that a drama therapist can work with. The, theoril, the theoretical component encapsulates theories of drama, storytelling, play, movement with touch and sound, movement analysis, myth, analytical and developmental psychology. As previously mentioned, there are a few notable scholars that helped in the form, form uh, that helped in forming the drama and movement therapy practice, and the first of being um, Billy Linkovist, who was a pioneer of the drama and movement therapy sesame approach. Linkovist developed her movement with touch and sound technique, which was inspired by her extensive work with client groups that had physical and cognitive low functioning abilities. Through repeated auditory and physical stimuli as carefully selected by the therapist, the client acquires a better sense of their mobility, self and spatial awareness. During the technique's experimental stage, clients with various mental and physical disabilities of low to high functioning abilities responded positively to the technique and this shift proved it, its possibility and ability to rewire brain neural pathways. The noting of neuroplasticity is to show how science and psychology is integrated within the drama therapy practice that primarily draws from art. Following her work within South Africa and her finding ways to working with men from the Zulu culture, uh, Linkovist learned that Ugugida, which is a dance form, can be articulated as a grounding ritual that she continued to use in her practice. Linkovist also wrote a book titled Bring White Beads When You Call on a Healer, which documents drama and body-centered methods of therapy in relation to both the African and Western perspective. This was of interest to me based on her integration of the Western articulated form of therapy in relation to our traditional African ways. Peter Slade was also another notable scholar. Uh, he worked extensively with children using child drama philosophy. He defined drama as the art of life or the doing of life and believed it held the potential for personal expression and self-development. Slade wrote his first book titled Child Drama in 1954, which remains a noted drama in education reference text till this very day. Slade also wrote the book's Introduction to Child Drama in 1958, Experience of Spontaneity in 1968, and Natural Dance in 1977. His last book titled Child Play its importance for human development was published in 1995 and it described the detail of play and his views on the human behavior. Manchester University made Slade an honorary companion in 1997 for his development of educational drama. Our third notable scholar that helped in the foundation phase of um, the Sesame approach was Rudolf Laban. 
and his art of movement concept form part of the movement foundation in the Sesame approach. The concept acknowledges language in two folds, the first being the mouth and another of the body as body language. Laban established the concept of movement analysis based on his exploration and findings of body language. Important factors to note in Laban's art of movement are effort, sp spatial form, spatial harmony, and body awareness. Laban later concentrated on movement as behavior with careful analysis of behavioral needs of industrial workers and psychiatric patients. This work forms the basis of where movement and dance therapy stemmed from and as well as expressive movement as used by theater and um, TV actors. Carl Jung's um, contribution to the Sesame approach was his notable theory of analytical psychology, where his work on the psychology of the unconscious brought focus to aspects that shape personality. These were both outer aspects, namely mythology, uh, religion, ancient symbols and rituals, customs and beliefs, and as well as the inner aspects, which were namely dreams, visions, hallucinations, and delusions. Carl Jung's analytical psychology considers the holistic well-being of the individual because it acknowledges that personality is not merely an innate experience, hence considers one's social and cultural context. Carl Jung also set out on a quest to Africa in hope of broadening his understanding of what he referred to as primitive psychology. Here he looked extensively at the psychoanalytical approach of the African mind from a European understanding. There's interesting insight he brings, but this also incites a major debate between the African and Western perspective of psychology. And if this um, raises any interest to you, you can uh, go and read his texts based on his journeys and travels to um, uh, Kenya and Uganda. Moving right along, although these theories or theorists formed the foundation of the drama and movement therapy sesame approach, it is of importance to understand that the drama therapy field is influenced and informed by various theories, concepts, methodologies, and techniques across the art and psychology field. With that said, we can move straight into what are the required entry requirements to study and practice as a drama and movement therapist. In order for one to become a registered drama therapist, one has to complete a postgraduate degree in drama and movement therapy, which includes both coursework and research, followed by supervised internships. However, one can apply for a postgraduate degree in drama therapy if they hold an undergraduate dramatic arts counseling, social work, or psychology degree. One needs to have completed an undergraduate psychology or drama degree, followed by a master's drama therapy or, or drama and movement therapy degree before they can register with the Health Professions Council of South Africa under the Arts Therapies scope. Both trainee and qualified drama therapists must adhere to the South African Association of Drama Therapists Code of Ethical Practice. Drama for Life is a postgraduate department under the University of the Witwatersrand and is currently the only department in South Africa offering drama therapy training. This is a one-year full-time or two-year part-time program which includes drama therapy, abnormal psychology, personality psychology, laboratory work, clinical supervision, performance research, critical reflexive practice, and research modules. A qualified drama therapist can work across various clinical and social contexts with various pathological diagnoses, behavioral, cognitive, and psychological needs. We have come to the end of my introduction to what drama and movement therapy practices so I would like to thank you for listening to this introduction video. We have reached the end and below are a list of some of the references that I've used in my findings and in supporting um, 
some of the theory that I have mentioned in this video. You can follow any one of the links if you are interested in finding out more. Thank you for listening and the end.